Mondays, I'm Lindsay Rodriguez. Welcome to The Power of Influence. Now, when you hear the name Kat Cora, you probably think, well, she's Iron Chef, she's a TV host, she owns a ton of restaurants, she's penned three cookbooks and one memoir, and now she is going to be returning to our screens with Curtis Stone to host My Kitchen Rules. It premieres on Fox on January 12th, so let's take a look at a sneak peek. Fox is cooking up a spicy new competition. Each of you are going to host a dinner party and cook for us and each other. So be polite. How did you become good friends? Our spouses f***ed each other. Oh. Mind your manners. The rice is undercooked, the cabbage is flavorless, but otherwise it's great. And always compliment the food. Corn is the most miraculous vegetable. By the time it goes through your digestive system, it puts itself back together. <laughs> Please welcome Kat Cora. Hi, Hi, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Fantastic, happy new year. Happy new year to you as well. Has the year, I mean, we're a week in and how's 2017 shaping up so far? Fantastic, I mean, it really is. You know, I've, 2016, it's, it had its great challenges and its great successes, and, but I'm really ready for 2017. It's been great. Yeah, well, you so have a, a ton of like fantastic stuff coming up, and of course, we're going to get into your new show, My yes. Kitchen Rules, in just a little bit. But we, I feel like we have so much to talk about, and I want to kind of take it back to your roots of growing up in Mississippi, because uh, in my research of you know trying to get to know you a little bit better before we met, it would seem that from birth, you know, like the culinary arts was something that were always going to be in your future. But I'm, I'm curious as to whether or not there was ever a different career path that you ever considered. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of them. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I grew up water skiing my whole life. So I thought I was going to be a pro skier, you know, really? for a long time. Okay. Um, but then, you know, I went into, I went to college, got a degree in physiology, exercise physiology mm -hmm. and nutrition. And so I thought I really was going to go into well, the wellness field for a long time. And then, you know, but I always had a love of restaurants and food and um, it ran in my family. It was kind of in my DNA, you know, because yeah. my family is Greek, um, you know, from the South. And so food was a big part of our lives. And uh, my godfather had restaurants. My grandfather had restaurants. So I kind of went back to that and, and fell in love with it again and rediscovered it. And I mean, obviously your Greek heritage and then uh, being in the South has like influenced a lot of your cookbooks. I mean, you've penned three cookbooks and one memoir right. so far. And mm -hmm. I'm assuming there'll be many, many more to come. Is there a particular... Um, dish that when you make it or when you eat it just like evokes a really happy family memory? There definitely is. There's one dish that you know I grew up with that my mom always made on birthdays, anniversaries, just special occasions and it's called a, it's a cinnamon stewed chicken, cinnamon Greek stewed chicken called kota kapama and kota is Greek for uh, chicken and kapama is a stew mm -hmm. and it was this amazing um, you know coated this rub of like cracked pepper and sea salt and cinnamon that you just rub on the chicken, you sear it in a skillet, you take it out and then you just add tomato and garlic and onion and oregano and all these aromatics and white wine and you just simmer the chicken back in it mm -hmm. for hours and you just let it, it's kind of a Sunday supper type of, wow. of dish that just was for me as every time she makes it or I make it, it yeah. just brings back all those memories. And that's something that's so wonderful about food, right? It's not just about nourishing our bodies, it's also about creating memories, it's about right. sharing experiences with friends and family and right. I feel like that's something that you definitely bring, excuse the pun, you bring to the table. <laughs> Um, with you. with your recipes. Thank you. Um, and then you know you've studied in you studied here in New York City, and then you also went to, to Europe. And so I'm curious to know what you what you think is uh, the biggest difference in the approach between like the American approach to food and how Europeans approach their food. Well, at the time, I mean, this was probably uh, I guess 18 years ago. I mean, that wasn't that long ago when um, women still were not allowed in French kitchens. I mean, I got when I went to Europe. I studied at the Culinary Institute of America in upstate New York in Hyde Park, and um, about two, you know, I wanted to go to France. I wanted to, you know, really do dive, do a deep dive, and and do that because it was. Um, it's scary, obviously, going into a three-star Michelin kitchen and, and cooking, especially as a woman, mm. um, especially almost 20 years ago. Um, but also, it was just something I really felt like I needed to do. It was something, a, a bucket list, an accomplishment I wanted to do, and I knew that it would help my career tremendously and, and my skills. And so, I uh, set about, you know, going in and finding out, you know, which kitchens would take me. And I sent letters out, and I got eight rejection letters in a row back, wow. and they literally said, "Women are not allowed in our kitchen. Sorry." 
and then I got two back from George Blanc and Roger Verge, who both accepted me. So I took both of them because one is like Nouvelle cuisine, one was at the time like you know the new French cooking, and one you know Roger Verge was still classical French, mm -hmm. and so and one was in you know northern you know near Lyon, and one was in, in the south of France. I mean, it's completely different climates and geographies. Yeah. So I took both, but. Um, you know, then, and I think still probably today, they just, in France and in Europe, I think cooking is just on a higher plane. Not in, not in terms of, you know, the, the ingredients or the love of food. It's just taken, it's, it's almost, like we say, cooking isn't rocket science. To them, it's rocket science. Right. I mean, it really is so, um, I mean, we've heard the stories of, you know, French chefs, you know, committing suicide because they lose a star. I mean, it's such a, you know, it's such a, incredible, uh, you know, um, almost I would say, not a burden, but it's almost such an incredible uh, accomplishment mm. there to them. It's like to internalized. Get a star. It's right? very internalized, yeah. it's very personal. Um, to get a star, to lose a star, um, so it's taken very, very seriously, and I think a lot of chefs here as well do, but I think we have a little bit more kind of, you know, uh, you know, a little bit more love of it, where it's not so internalized and personal and mm -hmm. so detrimental to everything around us. We just love it. Yeah. You know, it's I, a I passion versus it being so, you know. Life or death. Life or death. In, in some cases, right, quite literally. Correct. And I, I feel like the European way is, is sort of similar to what I've seen of um, Japanese, like, sushi chefs, where it's like they spend their entire life, like, perfecting the art correct. of, like, making the perfect. Correct. Per the perfect sushi, but here, like maybe it is like a little bit more lighthearted, and certainly in like the, yeah. the last few years, like we've seen such a, a rise in cooking shows, and I feel like chefs are like the new rock stars. But I wanted to get back to what you said about you know like being rejected by eight different places on the mm -hmm. basis of your gender, um, because as we all know, like you made history as the first ever female Iron Chef, yes, and you were also the first ever female to be inducted into the American Academy of Chefs Culinary. Arts Hall of Fame, right. which is amazing. Yes. Um, but so prior to that, I mean, I'm guessing that you really did find it to be a man's world. So my question is, how did you push through that? And was, was there people that kind of helped you break down those boundaries and just keep going when it seemed like everyone's going to turn me away for being a girl? You know, I think I just came from a very strong home. My mom was, uh, you know, she went off at a time when we were still in high school. Um, she really believed, she was a strong woman. I mean, she really believed, she always told me, you know, never depend on someone else for your success, for your finances, to, to carry you through life. You need to stand on your own two feet. You need to be your own person um, because uh, that was really important to instill in me as a woman. Mm -hmm. um, and she'd say the same thing to the brothers, but I think as being a woman, it was really important that she needed to let me, she needed to really teach me that. And so um, th my parents were really strong in that. They really did hold me up a lot and they gave me a lot of strong values and work ethic that I took with me. And, um, you know, in saying and teaching me a lot of those values, I think it just made me determine that, you know, I did deserve to be in that, that I did deserve my place at the table, if yes. you will. You know, that um, seeing my mom lead, uh, lead by example, and she went off at a time when, you know, got her doctorate in nursing, um, you know, and it was super tough for her, but she did it. And things like that, that really, for me, just led by example and led me into believing that, you know, I could do anything, you know. And so um, I never, I, I have fears like everyone else. Mm -hmm. I have doubts, but I didn't let that stop me. You know, I would push through that to the next to the next dream or goal, and then I'd set another goal or another dream. And so I think that's what just continued to get me to that next place um, in my career. I love that you had inspiring parents yeah. who in turn have created such an inspiring daughter. And I know that there are so many people who look up to you and they're like, oh, she Thank does you. everything. Thank so, you. And we'll talk more about that in a, in a little bit because I know that you, you spoke about it in your memoirs. But um, tell us a little bit about how your TV career came up and, and what it was like for that very first time being in front of the cameras and just being like, oh, Okay, this is like this whole new journey that you get to go on. We'll put it this way, I've evolved a lot since 1999, <laughs> my first show. <laughs> I've evolved, my comfort level has evolved a lot since my first show in 1999, which was Melting Pot with Rocco Despirito. And it came, you know, my, my career in TV came about really quickly. Um, I never, even when I went to culinary school in 97, I never thought, I thought, I'll have a, maybe I'll have a restaurant, maybe mm -hmm. I'll do a cookbook. You know, that was kind of, back then, 
cooking, you know, cooking shows were just, you know, Food Network was just becoming something. Right. There was PBS, of course, you know, and Julia Child and, you know, Galloping Gourmet and, you know, but, you know, Jacques Pepin, but there wasn't this giant phenomenon of celebrity chef yet. Yeah. It was just happening. I mean, it was just, we were just on the bubble of that when mm -hmm. I was in culinary school. So when I went to culinary school, it was really about just what I said, those were kind of the goals. It was the biggest goals we had was like, I'll open restaurants and, you know, do cookbooks and things like that. So um, when I finished uh, culinary school and went to France, by the time I got back from France, started my career, started my jobs and, you know, um, then you got a job uh, as an executive chef and partner with Michael Chiarella to open up Postino in the Bay Area. And, you know, decided to do a little local show in San Francisco. They asked me to come do Bay Cafe in San Francisco and I said, sure, I'll come do the little, you know, local show and never been on television, never done one cooking segment ever. Went on there and just went like, I gotta be on television. I gotta be doing this. You know, yeah. I just got, it was something, it was kind of a, it was an epiphany. So you, you fell know? in love with it? I fell in love with it immediately. And, um, and so I, I took that tape and I said, and this was still in the day where you could take a, you know, a, and VHS tape, VHS, right? Yeah. VHS. I'm anyway, aging myself first a little bit. Tape was like VHS. VHS. <laughs> you could take a VHS tape and send it to Food Network, and it would actually get in the hands of a, del a developer, right? You know, one yeah. of the, you know, somebody in development. And so it did. I sent it in. I sent that segment in, and they asked me to come do a guest appearance on uh, one of their one of their shows. And so I, d I went there. They asked me to come back. I went back. They asked me to come do Ready Set Cook four times, you know, four shows in a row. And then they came in and then called me later and said, you want to come and do an audition for Melting Pot with Rocco Despirito? And I said, you know, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Went and did it and got the part. And that was really, that was 1999 and that started my career. And yeah, I mean, the first time I, the first shows were just, you know, I was so green. I didn't know anything about doing a cooking show. Um, so I did a little bit of, you know, I had, a, you know, some coaching, a little bit here and there. It was actually Rocco's coach. and. He, you know, he said, let's coach, let's have a coach together. And I said, fine. And um, so we had some coaching and got a little skills under, under my belt. And, and then it just kind of flowed. Then it started right. becoming natural. And then I got Iron Chef in 2005. And mm -hmm. then it just took off. And that was kind of the tipping point. Yeah. Well, Iron Chef was a tipping point for my career. But, you know, like to your point about being green when you first started your TV career, I actually think people kind of really love that because yeah. it shows that you're real. I mean, you are someone who is incredibly accomplished. And so when people get to kind of go on this journey with you where they see you like first on Melting Pot and then right. like the evolution all the way through like Iron Chef and, and now My Kitchen Rules, I think people, they feel more invested because they're like, oh, we feel like we've grown up with Kat. Yeah. Like, we've been there. And I hear that from a lot of fans. Like, yeah. oh, I've been watching you since 19, since Melting Pot, and I just feel like I've seen you grow up, and yeah. you know now you're doing this amazing Fox show, or you you're an Iron Chef, and so that's it's so endearing. I mean, I'm so humbled still to this day of, you know, because I mean I'm still little Mississippi girl, you know, I'm not any different, you know, I'm still who I was. But that's know, why people up. love you. Your yeah. your personality is so infectious. Like you're you're so easy thank to you. and wonderful that. to watch. Um, and so we're super excited for you for yeah, My Kitchen thank you. Rules. I yes. know, yeah. I'm excited. So you get to be reunited with yes. Curtis Stone, who you worked with on Around the World. He's my brother days. who I love. Yeah, and you were you were just saying before we actually started um, yeah. rolling about like what a wonderful relationship you have with him. We do. So did it kind of just feel like a little bit of a homecoming? It was, was a total like, homecoming. Yeah. He, he was, we were texting back and forth and like, oh my God, how do we, how do we, we're working together again. We're getting Lots the band back. Lots of emojis back. and yeah, actually, yeah, emojis <laughs> and we're getting the band back together yeah. and kind of thing. And just, we were just so excited to work together. I mean, we just adore each other. Like it's actually as if we were born together. I mean, he's just, and I said it sounds cheesy, but it's just, we, we are so connected in so many ways. Matter of fact, when we were doing 80 plays, Lindsay, his wife was pregnant. I mean, she was oh, yeah. about to have the baby. Yeah. And he just, he was like the nervous dad. And I, and I have four children. Yeah. So I was like, it's gonna be fine. She's not gonna have the baby. I and mean, I kept giving him a lot of, you know, coaching and reassurance. And so at the end of the trip, she didn't have the baby on the, on 80 plates, thank God. He was, you know, she had him when he back in LA. Mm -hmm. But during that time, his parents actually went and stayed in Mississippi, from Australia. They were visiting the South really? and went and stayed with my mom. And my mom took him all over Mississippi. 
and so they got I mean so our you know our families connected and and then we just love each other yeah and I feel like in this industry like those kinds of I mean like you have uh, you have like pairings that um, that have good chemistry but for it to go that deep to the point where you're involved in each other's families like that's really rare and I think that also contributes to why people are probably so excited to see the two of you reunited yeah I know I'm really excited to see the two of you yes we're so excited for the show Um, and so tell us about My Kitchen Rules because it was a huge phenomenon in um, in Australia and as I was saying to you earlier I still have friends to this day who like do their own version of My Kitchen <laughs> Rules where they're all like competing but you have um, a few celebrity couples but yes. not all like married couples I mean you have um, Brandy and Ray J so they're brother and sister right. um, and then a really interesting pairing is Brandy uh, Glanville and, yeah, and Dean, Dean Ch- Ch- yeah. Yes. yeah and they met obviously in very well, they met. Well, they're, 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 yeah, they're, their spouses hooked up and yeah. ended up divorcing them and got married. Yeah. Uh, Leanne Rhines and Eddie uh, Sibron. So, yeah, but at least, married. you know, a nice friendship. But they became friends. Yeah, yeah, they became friends over it and bonded over it. And they so. paired up. And then uh, Lance there's Bass Lance Bassett's mom. mom, who are, you know, they only live 10 minutes from my, from Jackson. So they oh, live really? in Clinton and she lives from. Ten minutes from my mom. Uh, so so it's really uh, your cool. mom and his mom friends as well. They, ha- they haven't. We haven't connected that yet, but we will. Yeah. Um, but uh, so that was a blast. Naomi Judd and Larry, her mm-hmm. husband, yeah. um, and then uh, Andrew Dice Clay and Valerie. His and, wife. Now, and now are they still together? Or They're they still. Con- they they were married. They yeah. got divorced. And now they're together. Oh, that's nice. But they still call each other husband and wife. I like that. Yeah. It's like a happy ending. And so they're all going to be competing and, and hosting dinner parties at their houses, yeah. and then you and Curtis get to go and and judge. We're judging um, it. Yeah. What would you say is your? I mean, you're definitely not like a Simon Cowell kind of, you know, like angry. Oh, I, like, I kind what of became you? the. I kind of became a, a little bit of the hammer on the show. Really? Yeah, I did. Not intentionally. Just it just kind of flowed that way. Curtis and I have a, you know, kind of a back and forth. Like a he was a little, a little of. bit. He was a little. He was a little. I mean, believe me, he had his moments, but. You know, I think that for me, I kind of rose up, and you know, because I was on Iron Chef. Iron Chef is such a tough judging situation yeah. and I was critiqued for how many se- I mean like from 2005 until you right know? and so I work into such pressure as well yeah exactly like so I think my judging technique is a little little tougher okay and Curtis was a little bit more gentler with them although he had his moments where he got tough um, so there are, yeah I mean I don't I think there's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how our judging styles are because they're, they're definitely they're good. They work well together. They're very contrasting in a good way. And that's what you want. Yeah. Like you don't want two yeah. people who are exactly the same. Correct. Because then, like, there's it was no, so like, good. Shade. Yeah. So, and it was um, fun. We we kind of played back and forth off of each other. Which that's was good. wonderful. I mean, what do you look for? Um, obviously, you can't give away like right. the outcome of, of the series yet. But um, well, like, what do you look for when when you're judging the perfect dinner party? Like, what are you scoring your contestants on? Well, we're looking for creativity, obviously, especially not only just for the food, but the decor how they set up the decor how they created the menu yeah. how the menu looks how they worded the menu and you know what that looks like because that obviously that's a feast for the eyes before, right when you sit down before you taste the food yeah. you want to get excited about the food presentation, um, presentation right that's the, the decor presentation and then obviously how they're presenting the food how are they you know what's their techniques in using the food are they using fresh ingredients or are they using things out of a can in a box mm-hmm. which is a big no-no for me it's mm-hmm. like you know you're if you come to the table and you say I'm a good cook then I want to see your skills right because this is a cooking competition yeah. you know um, and so I think those are a lot of the things that we were looking for originality mm-hmm. you know being you know using resources you had at your fingertips um, really digging deep into your background and if your family recipes if you have something you know incredible bring it um, so really, you know, compete. You know, yeah. Come on and compete. You know, you're, you're five couples competing to throw the, you know, the best Hollywood dinner party. We want to see the best Hollywood dinner party. We want it to be exciting. Absolutely. So and does that also involve like conversation? Like if, you know, like if there's something, I don't know, like a conversation that goes a little bit awry, like do they have points taken away or do they get points added for Well, the it depends on what the conversation drama. is. They can, I mean, they can go awry all they want. I mean, we, it's our job as the host as a host would, mm-hmm. if there's, you know, if somebody, <laughs> at a regular dinner party, if people, you know, have a little too much to drink or they, you know, get in, if there's two people that don't really get along and yeah. things start, you know, somebody's throwing a dinner roll at somebody's head, <laughs> you know, it's your job as a host to, you know, to, catch that to simmer roll. it all down, right? <laughs> yeah. And to kind of keep the peace. But, you Is know. another we, cooking pun to simmer it down? <laughs> simmer it down, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So it was our job as hosts to kind of, you know, direct, you know, kind of guide the party. But for the most part, we let them just enjoy themselves and go. And yeah, sometimes the sometimes the conversations got 
really wild and I crazy bet. and there was drama and sometimes there were tears in the kitchen and I mean you're gonna see it all I mean you're gonna see happy tears drama things catch on fire I mean there's all kinds <laughs> of debauchery wow. happening it's oh my just, god yeah it's I'm gonna very be great. excited yeah. to watch this yeah. um are there is there a, a particular celebrity pairing that you would love to see on say a season two Ooh, that's an, that's interesting Ooh, I haven't thought of that question I don't know um let's see Oh, I have to think about that one. Okay. I haven't, yeah, I haven't thought about that. I haven't th thought that far ahead. There's I mean, definitely going to be a season two. Fingers crossed. Yes, There's gonna be I mean, I think that's a but, good But, you know, but uh, I think that, but I don't know. Anybody you want to see? What do you Ooh, think? Um, well, I, you know what? I know that you've worked with Michelle Obama um, yes. on her, like, um, the Chef's Move to, to Schools program. I kind of love M Michelle and Barack. Oh, I'd love to see them. I would love to see them. Because can we, I feel can like we phone be them up? Sure. I mean, do you let's, have Michelle's number? Actually, like, I, I, I might have a look. I don't have her direct number, but okay. I might have a couple people, you can five like, people deep yeah, to get right. to it. <laughs> six degrees of separation. <laughs> yeah, six degrees of separation. Yeah. Right. Let's make that so. happen. Just make sure I'm invited. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll sit in the back. I promise right, I won't get in the way, but I just I want to be All a fly right. on the wall for that yeah. dinner party. Maybe Oprah and Stedman. Ooh, that would be a good or one Or Oprah well. and Gail. Oprah and Gail. They would be um, so fun. Ooh. Oprah and Gail would be so fun to gather in what the kitchen. What about the two Ryans, Ryan Gosling and Ryan Reynolds? Ooh. That would yeah. be, I mean, that would be just purely selfish. I wouldn't <laughs> even care if they cooked. I would just be like, hey, <laughs> welcome to my home. Apron, no shirt to serve the food. <laughs> exactly. Hello, your appetizer served. Exactly. Have you ever thrown a dinner party that's gone completely awry? Not completely, but I've seen some crazy dinner parties. Yeah, I've yeah. seen some dinner parties that have gotten a little out of control. Yeah, definitely. What's like the the wild the same? Oh my gosh! I mean, I've seen been dinner parties. I've seen weddings where people just get thrown in. You know, like people, food, you know, food gets thrown. People get crazy. They're drunk. They throw get thrown in the pool <gasps> accidentally. <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just yeah. I've seen some some wild things go down in wow. some dinner parties, but. Things get burnt, mm -hmm. dinner's not cooked, you're ordering in. Yeah. You know, so, well, I, I didn't mind. No, I, I haven't yeah. had that happen. I've had a chicken, you know, catch on fire in an oven before. I and mean, what's just the what's fire the extinguisher? And then you call Chinese food. And then, you, well, you know what? Yeah. So, um, for Thanksgiving, just this past Thanksgiving, yeah. I hosted eight people. I love to cook. I mean, I'm, I'm no cat Cora, but um, I, I had yeah. eight people at my house. You have some skills. I got some bad skills. I also have a tiny New York kitchen, right? Yeah. So, I'm trying to cook like 10 different different dishes right. in this like teeny yeah. kitchen and like when it was time to bring the turkey out I'd like stuffed like a, a ton of like dry herbs like you know right. twigs of you know rosemary and whatever and as I brought it out I think like a little bit of oil dropped or something and it actually did start smoking start, well no it like fire <laughs> and I was like oh my god oh my god but like thankfully we saved it we put like a wet towel on it and like the, the the bird was saved thank that's goodness good. but I was like that's oh my god forget the been, oven just save the bird just save exactly yeah, yeah. and I was like oh my god I've been like planning this for a week and it's like ruined but it was all good it was good it was yeah. all good in the so end did the right thing yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Woo. Um, if there, and if how was it dry or juicy? It was juicy, thank okay, goodness, because I'd been basting it. Yeah. Like I was like stabbing that bird with like her butter every like twenty minutes. So it was it was juicy, was good. thank goodness. Right. Uh, you'd be proud, I hope. I yeah. hope I would have made you proud. Um, if someone was going to be making uh, a meal for someone that they wanted to impress, and it was like the first time that they were cooking for them, but they also didn't have the mad skills. Right. Right. What uh, what um, recipe of yours would you recommend they try? Ooh, probably that. Probably something like. A matter of fact, someone just texted me. They were trying to impress a girl. This woman was trying to impress a girlfriend, and I said, "Well, make my cinnamon stew chicken. It's super easy." Mm -hmm. And she said, "Okay, I, I, I'm not sure." And I said, "No, no, no. Trust me. It's super easy. I mean, you sear it in a skillet. You take it out. I mean, it's three ingredients. You rub on it. You right. Know? It's, and cinnamon? you have two of them already. Probably three of them. And okay. Your cinnamon, pepper, yeah. salt." Too easy. Rub it on the okay. rub it on the chicken, sear it, take it out, and then you make your regular tomato sauce. It's right. tomatoes, you know, it's easy. And so she made it, it was a super hit. So Yay. that's a good one. Like cinnamon stew chicken, super easy, but it's a sexy dish. Okay. It's like braised and stewed and mm. yummy and tomatoey and yeah. pour a little bit of pinot or some kind of, you know, delicious wine with it and you know, a little bit of salad and bread. I mean it's like, you know, you'll be having sex on the table.
Christina. Oh, well, I know what I'm cooking for dinner tonight then, <laughs> yeah, in that perfect. case. Mm. Yeah, um, So, as I mentioned before, three cookbooks and your memoir. Yes, my memoir. And, and so I thought that your memoir was incredibly brave. Thank you. Um, Appreciate that. And I think that you give hope to a lot of people who have over, who have had to deal with a lot of hardships in their life. And you are someone who really proves that you can Thank have you. it all. Because, like, you are a mom, you're a restaurateur, you're a philanthropist, you're a chef, you're a TV host. Um, but to anyone who might still be thinking, I just... I, I just I can't I have all these dreams but I don't know how to achieve them mm -hmm. what advice would you give to those people I would say that you know it is it is uh, when you do have trauma um, like I've had or you have some you have had some hardships I think it's really um, it's really about you know taking you know getting therapy you know please get help get some therapy because I got a lot of therapy for that because that always helps you can't do it alone right. you know that's the biggest thing is you can't do it alone yeah. and you shouldn't try to do it alone um, there's plenty of help out there, um, and I think that that's the number one thing because in, in therapy and, and really reflecting, it gives you a chance to reflect on and, and work through a lot of your fears. But also I think meditation is a big thing for me. Meditation has helped kind of calm the, calm the noise in my head mm -hmm. a lot. Is this um, something you practice daily? I do. I do. I practice wow. it daily, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. If you can do it more than once a day, it's great. Mm -hmm. But it definitely calms the noise in my head, and so I think that that really and it, and it centers me a lot, so that I can take a breath and take a pause when I need to. If I'm starting to feel anxious, or if I'm starting those fears start kind of bubbling up, um, so I think that uh, getting therapy, meditating, do some kind of you know something that makes you feel good, yoga or working out. I do a yeah. hardcore fit workout every day that just helps me like grind it out yeah. um, and get mentally right. So. I would say those three things are really, you know, get some sleep. You know, I don't get I don't, that's that's something I don't practice. Well, but yeah. try if you can do it. It's <laughs> right. great. I don't. I'm, I need to practice what I preach. But I think you know, I love. I have a really healthy diet. I eat right. I get some exercise every day. But I think the two biggest things is getting, you know, especially if you're going through trauma, is getting therapy, mm -hmm. getting some help, yeah. talk through those things, and you know, spend time doing that. And then meditation is great. And I think, I mean, thank you for, for giving that, that message like to people that, you know, yeah. you're not alone. You can have it all. Like hard work does pay off and, and perseverance is, is something that will, will get you to where you need to be. Right. And but like you have to have that. balance. You know, you balance. have to have balance. It took me a long time to find balance and I still sometimes don't have it. I still get off kilter and go, okay, I'm getting off kilter. Don't have my balance. I got to find my balance again. Right. But now I know enough to come back to that. And, and find the balance again yeah. and, and you know, say no when I need to say no and say yes to myself when I need to say yes, you know, and so I think that that's really important. It takes a long time for us to get there, mm. you know, but it's that's important to find the balance as well as much as you can. It's helpful when people um, as influential as yourself are talking about it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. You were yes. so inspiring to so many people, myself included. Appreciate that. Um, so uh, My Kitchen Rules, yes. it premieres on Fox uh, on the 12th of 12th, January. This Thursday, 9 yes. p.m., following Hell's Kitchen. Super Check it out. Super exciting. And then if you want to learn more about Kat, you can go to her website. It's just Kat. katcora.com. Yes, it is. Uh, you can buy all her cookbooks there and her memoirs. You can learn more about Chefs of Humanity, which is an amazing foundation you. That, that you created. Um, you're just doing such incredible work, so keep it up. And thank Thanks you so much, much for oh, chatting with so us. Thank you so much. Oh. Happy New Year. Oh, I adore you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you. <laughs>